Hey guys, Dan Nekis here. In today's video, what I want to take you through is how we create what we call booster campaigns. So effectively what they are, it's a, it's a name we've given campaigns that once we send them out and we have you know some data there, what we want to do is we want to send resend these campaigns out to people who didn't open or click on the email that we initially sent out, on the campaign we initially sent out. Now we don't use this all the time. This is something that we save for uh, you know, uh, sales, uh, offers, you know, product releases, or like I'm going to show you today, we're running a uh, giveaway strategy. So we've got a, you know, a sweepstakes that we're running, a competition that we're running, and we've sent it out to our entire list. And what we want to do is we want to um, re-engage with those people that haven't opened it, because we think this is a value. This is something that, you know, everyone would probably be interested in that's on our list. So what we want to do is we want to resend it out. Now we resend emails out for various reasons. Now think about it like this. So let's say so we send these out at the first campaign out at seven o'clock in the morning, um, and you know we have a certain percentage of people that open it. What if at seven o'clock in the morning, you know, some of our subscribers are always driving to work at that time of morning, and they, they just don't check their email. And by the time they do check their email later in the day our email's been pushed further and further and further down the list because they've received so many other emails, either work-related, personal, or business-related, whatever it might be. So what we want to do is we want to resend them at a different time, so on a different day. And the, and the idea behind that is there's more chance that they might be, not be busy at that time, it might be the time they do check their email and there's a chance we can you know, get them to engage or open and click our email and take the action that we want them to do. So I will take you over to uh, my screen and all you need to do is just I've got a giveaway announcement email that I've sent here on Gearbunch's account and I set this to everyone so we've got a slightly lower or we've got a lower open rate than we normally like to have um, so what you want to do is we want to go in and we want to create a segment of people that have opened or clicked on this email so we've had 3,200 people have opened it and we've had 134 people click through on it. So what we do is go over to list and segments. And we'll create a list or segment. Segment, and we'll call this um, opened or clicked, giveaway announcement email one. So then we just select on what someone has or hasn't done, and we'll say that they've opened an email at least once over all time, and we'll add a filter where the campaign name equals, we'll type it in, it might be easier so you can show, it pops up in the drop down when you start typing it. And we'll do an or, and this is just a cover all. What we'll say, it will ask it to filter also who clicked the email. And that campaign name is giveaway. The reason we do that is sometimes the cookie fires for the click but hasn't fired for the open. And that could be for a few reasons, a slow connection speed. It hasn't totally opened the email before the person's clicked on whatever the call to action a button that we have on there, whether it's a link or a buy now button or whatever it might be. So sometimes we do get anomalies where, you know, we have someone who's clicked on an email but hasn't actually technically opened it. So we want to make sure that we cover all those. So we'll create that segment. And that will just uh, give us the amount of people that are in there. So I'll pause that email until that propagates. Okay, so that list is propagated now in the segment. We've got 3,219 members that are in there. So then what we need to do is go back to our original campaign. Now the beauty of this is, is that we're relying on factors such as you know time being a variable. So we'll clone this. So we don't, and I'll just recall, I'll call this booster because it's the second time we're sending it. We're gonna send it to the same list. Now we don't need to change the content of the email because these people never opened or clicked on it. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to send it at a different time or a different day so that we're a better chance of showing up in their inbox. What I will do as well is you need to exclude that list that we just created. EB. Oh, 
open clicked giveaway announcement email one. That's the one there. And that will tell us it's taken the couple of thousand people off there that we're not going to be sending to. Now the other beauty of this, like I said, you don't have to create new content is you can simply swap around your subject line and preview text. So I'll just cut that. We just want it to appear differently in the inbox to the user. So you can see there, I've just kept the emoji in there, but what I've done is swapped around the subject line and preview text. I've kept the content the same for the email because the person hasn't seen the email, they haven't opened or clicked on it, so we don't need to change that. Continue to review. And then we'll go to schedule or send. And then we'll just schedule it at a time in the future. So I wouldn't recommend just going 24 hours ahead for the reasons that I said that what if they're driving every day at that time. Um, so what I would do is I'd look at either bringing it forward a few hours, depending on when you initially send it, so say 20 hours, or look at maybe going 36 hours, so you might hit them in their afternoon. But yeah, just get it back out there. Don't do this every time because, uh, you know, the chances of, you know, you're going to get some lower open rates and click rates because, you know, not everyone's going to be interested. If you've tried a couple of times and they're not that interested, but don't do this with every email. Save this strategy for when you have a... Um, uh, you know, an offer or a sale or a giveaway like I'm showing you in this example. But look, if you're in Clavio, like we use for our clients and, and, and we use for our brand gear bunch as well, this is the way to do it. This is resending to those people that haven't opened or clicked. If you don't have a Clavio account, just go down into the description below. There's a link down there. You can create an account for free for yourself. Um, if you haven't subscribed, get down and just click on the button and subscribe to the channel. I'm always adding really good, new, useful content in little bite-sized videos that you can consume, you know, in a very short amount of time and implement straight into your business. So um, make sure you give us a comment if you like it, share it around with your, your friends. Uh, look, yeah, and that's it. Implement this into your business and you should see some um, improvements in your results. So I'll talk to you in the next video.